The EOS R was a lackluster debut for Canon's full-frame mirrorless system, missing key features like in-body stabilization. Given that, I was a bit surprised that its next model was the budget EOS RP. I really want to see what Canon can do with full-frame, not cropped 4K video and in-body stabilization. A budget model also makes little sense, considering that some of the RF lenses on the market right now cost twice as much as the camera. The EOS RP does have certain charms, like a tiny body and flip-around screen, and at $1,299, it's significantly cheaper than any other new full-frame mirrorless camera on the market. But does it also deliver in value? Let's find out. The EOS RP is by far the lightest full-frame mirrorless camera out there. At just over a pound, it weighs 170 grams less than the EOS R. In fact, it's nearly as light as some APS-C cameras, like Canon's own EOS Rebel SL3. It also feels tiny. With a small lens like the 35mm f1.8 model here, it'll make an ideal walking around or street photography camera. I wasn't expecting that from a full-frame mirrorless model, but I like it. To hit that weight though, Canon had to cut some corners. It doesn't feel as solid as the EOS R and lacks weather sealing. For its target market though, I don't think that's a huge deal. Other missing features hurt more though. There's no in-body stabilization, which effectively reduces its low light capability. It's only got a single UHS-2 card slot and a much smaller battery than the EOS R2. You only get 250 shots on a charge, so you'll need to carry extra batteries. Considering its size, I found the EOS RP's ergonomics to be excellent. There are two dials to adjust exposure, along with the front dial found on all RF mount lenses. The rear touch display can be flipped around for vloggers, but there are some limitations we'll go into shortly. The OLED EVF is not the best out there with only 2.36 million dots and a 60 hz max refresh. To be fair, that's the same as the one on Sony's more expensive A7 III. I like what Canon has done with the ports. You get both headphone and microphone jacks, which is nice on a budget camera. You get a mini HDMI port, and the USB Type-C port can be used for data transfers, as well as direct charging. So far, so good, but shooting performance is where I start to see some of the limitations of the SRP compared to other full-frame mirrorless cameras. Shooting speeds max out at 5 frames per second in single AF mode or 4 frames per second with continuous autofocus. That's not great, even for a budget model. It has Canon's excellent dual-pixel autofocus system, and for regular shooting, it excels. If I kept the point locked on my subjects, I was rewarded with a large percentage of in-focus shots. Canon already had eye tracking, but only for single-shot AF, where it's less useful. The EOS RP, however, now has face and pupil detection that works in continuous autofocus mode. If you're not too far from your subject, it does a nice job finding their faces. If their eyes go out of view, it will quickly switch to face detection and back to the eyes when they reappear. The problem is, is that the RP shoots at only 2.5 frames per second in that mode, with a pretty serious blackout between shots. That made it hard for me to track fast-moving subjects, so you'd actually be better off sticking with regular single-point AF for that. One other big issue. With its small size, the EOS RP should make a good street photography camera. But if you want a silent shutter, as many street shooters do, it only works in scene mode. That makes it useless, as you have no manual control over the aperture or shutter. I cannot figure out for the life of me why Canon did this. Overall, this is a fine camera for doing portrait and landscape work, but not so much for any kind of action or sports photography. And it's limited for street photos by the wonky silent shutter settings. In terms of video, yes, the EOS RP does 4K, but only at up to 24 or 25 frames per second, not 30 frames per second. It's also cropped down to an APS-C sensor size, limiting the shallow depth of field and low light benefits of a full frame sensor. Worse yet, the dual pixel autofocus only works at 1080p. At 4K, you're limited to contrast detect. Meanwhile, at 1080p, you can shoot at up to 60 frames per second, but not 24p, weirdly. So if you decide you want to shoot video at both 4K and 1080p, you won't be able to match frame rates. Combined with the lack of in-body stabilization and terrible rolling shutter, I can't recommend the EOS RP for video. Canon cameras have always produced pleasing skin tones and colors, and the EOS RP is no exception. It also has great low-light shooting capability, with ISO speeds ranging from 100 to 40,000 or up to 102,400 in expanded mode. You'll find you can get usable pictures all the way up to ISO 12,800 and beyond, in my opinion. However, I found the dynamic range to be poor, especially at low ISOs. That means if you shoot in RAW and try to push the shadows, you'll get a surprising amount of noise, even compared to APS-C cameras. The SRP is relatively cheap at $1,299, but is it a good value? I don't think so. 
You'll pay over $2,300 with an RF 24-105 kit lens, and suddenly that's not so cheap anymore. Sure, you could use the adapter and EF lenses, but then why not just get a 6D Mark II? If I were looking for a camera in that price range, I'd be more tempted by Fujifilm's $1,499 X-T3, even though it's APS-C. It has more advanced features across the board, especially for video, and with a native kit lens, would actually cost less. The Fujifilm X-T30 at $900 has similar capabilities for a lot less. Another decent option is Sony's a7 II, currently priced at $1,400, which lacks 4K video, but has 5-axis in-body stabilization and better lens options. In the meantime, I'm still waiting for Canon to show what it can really do with the excellent potential of its full-frame RF system.